Umang, uh, Sujit, thank you so much for the intro of the 4400s. We want to talk about it and how do we put that all together in, in, in one place is, is, is the agenda for me. My name is Abhi Shamsundar. I'll be talking about access network deployment and how soon we can do this. Traditionally, uh, we'll focus on you know, how network deployment has always happened uh, in terms of access switches. Access switches and anything below has always been uh, the volume runners. That's what you deploy the most. And the traditional approach has been, you have to uh, unbox the device, bootstrap with the switch configuration, and then hopefully have uh, some sort of scripting enabled to be able to push configurations from there on. And on an individual device, you have to go in and configure interface configs uh, for you to go uh, be able to plug in additional devices there, from there on. And again, if it is a full stack deployment, you're talking about assignment of APs to this site and then naming of APs, all of this on the day of the deployment. So we are trying, trying to, and making this a, a huge shift and how can we do this all in a, in a rapid way on the day of deployment? How can we do more work preparing for this. Rapid deployment approach will involve us being able to do true ZTP, uh, being able to orchestrate configurations as soon as the switch hits the cloud and automatically gets the configuration down, down all the way to the switches. Dynamic port profiles will further take out the uh, need for actually having to uh, do configurations on a per interface basis, and then auto assignment of uh, APs uh, to the site. All of this can be done day zero on the day of planning or the day much before uh, the day when you go rack and stack. And that's how we would want to go about this particular uh, deployment approach. Now, we've, we've done this transformation experience with one of, one of the Fortune 10 companies. From the point of the switch being plugged in to the point of where all devices that are connected to the switch are passing traffic in less than 13 minutes. What I want to show today uh, is how do we achieve this and also a demo of, uh, uh, of this, all of this happening. The first piece on the, again, a lot of this, uh, the focus will be definitely on day zero. Uh, we'll continue to focus on what things can we do in preparation so that the day one is as simple as possible. On day zero, we provide you with claim codes um, or, or even activation codes to all of your switches as well as access points all in one space. You just click that once and then you're able to actually automatically claim all devices and now they're available for configuration, even if they are not connected yet. And that's what we're gonna watch. So I'm gonna go ahead and claim all of my switches and access points for this demo. I'm claiming one switch and three access points, but it, it can be hundreds of switches as well as uh, thousands of access points all in one shot. So you go ahead and get the devices claimed, the devices are assigned to the site uh, as, as uh, as you can see, a site called NFD demo. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and actually turn the switch on. Uh, we'll start a timer at what point the switch is on uh, uh, so that we can see. You also see on the right-hand side, uh, there is no network connectivity. We've deployed a WLAN called Network Field Day. That way uh, on the Wi-Fi, you don't see uh, the, uh, the network being advertised, but the end goal for us being this network being advertised and a client being able to connect. So that's that's not that's also seen here that the Wi-Fi is is not ready yet. So the switches are booting. Uh, the Wi-Fi is not there. What do we do next? So day zero, come back again uh, while the switch is booting. What we did is we created a hierarchy, a hierarchy wherein we are able to say you have uh, your organization, all of the configurations that needs to go to across all switches, even if it means you have different kinds of switches. Maybe uh, they're playing different roles. They're all different models. We can manage all of, all of that in one template. And also the next level of hierarchy would be the site, uh, wherein on that particular site, if you have any variables in there, we can make edits still inheriting the exact same template that you created first up and being able to make changes on the site level. Again, on the individual, individual switch level as well, we'll, we can go ahead and make changes. So that's templates overall, and we'll, we'll see a demo of that too. Now, we spoke about a paradigm shift in, in terms of uh, how devices are getting plugged into your switches. You now are able to say, let the device identify itself, let the client identify itself when it's coming into your network and say, you know, this is an AP, I am an AP, give me an AP profile. I'm a, I'm a, a camera, give me a camera profile. 
and uh, you know you name it and you're able to make those decisions of identifying by using all of these different variety of information that you have on your on your right hand side be it LLDP properties your even radius username radius filter ID if, if a radius server is sending that back if nothing we can even recognize the device based on the Mac or some portion of the Mac and bring that on onto the network so having said that uh, the most important piece that we would want to do next is actually go into the demo and start looking at stuff. You see the switch are already being assigned to the site. That's the one that I claim. The status is disconnected. Nothing's connected to it. All I'm going to do on this particular screen is actually provide a name to this particular switch. Everything else is all inherited directly from the template. Now, what's happening from the template perspective is everything I configured for this particular device on, on a per site basis, be it uh, the port profiles themselves saying, if you are starting with the LL, uh, MAC address of 500B91, I want you to get the profile of LED like. If you are a MAC address of E0A700, you can be a camera. Uh, if you are you know, LLDP chassis ID exhibiting this particular MAC address, then you can be the AP profile. Now, what, what this means is that now you're able to plug in devices to any port on the switch without having to worry about somebody plugging things and, uh, into the wrong port and say, my camera isn't streaming. Uh, I don't know what to do instead of plugging it on port zero versus port one. Uh, all of these definitions onto the switch have all come from uh, its template directly. You wouldn't have to change anything uh, locally on, on a per switch basis. So let's go and look at the templates themselves. So we've created a template called NFT template. You have the ability on an entire org basis to configure a variety of things. So let's talk about the most important pieces that are relevant to this particular demo. You have uh, an ability to create port profiles or an abstraction level of uh, configurations that needs to go on a device that identifies itself as an AP and that's port profile. Similarly, an LED light, uh, an IoT port, uh, you can you can create more of your own. Here I've created a Workara camera as well as an LED light. And how do we identify those devices? As I mentioned, you're able to do a uh, dynamic port configuration on all of these devices. So we've created the base for the devices to come onto the, uh, come onto the network day zero none of this required to be done on the day of rather it's all done well ahead in advance and even taking out errors uh in in well, taking out any errors that may happen on a per device basis on a per site basis as well you can inherit the entire template you will see all of the port profiles as well as uh the dynamic port pro configuration come into effect uh, if you would like to change something on an individual site basis, for example, uh, you don't want to inherit the radius server that you already inherited from, from the template. Uh, we did not define any radius servers in the template, but if you wanted to add a radius server or change a radius server, for example, for example, on this particular site alone, maybe you're deploying a brand new radius server, you want to test this particular site out. All you would do is just say, override the configuration uh, on everything that is inherited from the rest of the template perspective, all stays intact. Only the, uh, uh, only the piece of override will be your radius server configuration because you're trying a brand new radius server on this particular site. So you can go ahead and add the radius server in there. Uh, you've created, uh, now you've created the uh, radius server template, you've overridden the config, it is newly applied on, on the site directly. Now you also want to be able to uh, want to be able to create the WLANs as well, right? Because you want your APs to start advertising these WLANs. So you, again, day zero, you can add, uh, create the WLANs uh, of your choice. Uh, we've created network field day corp, network field day guest. We see the access points are still in disconnected state. So we have set up all of the all of the framework for us to start get, getting to a point where we where we want to be, right? Again, just a simple reminder, we want everything in this green box, uh, anything that is access and beyond to be zero touch, completely provisioned automatically. Uh, anything plugging the switches themselves, zero touch provision, as well as the clients that are coming on, you plug them in, uh, you want to be able to get, uh, get the right VLAN on the other end. So let's go ahead and see what happened uh, to the switch now. The switch booted up, uh, the switch came up uh, automatically, the timer's still running, it's at the 
around the six minutes and 30 second mark. Uh, at that point, the switch is fully connected onto the network. You see the devices uh, on the front panel also connected, the APs, the, uh, the cameras and the LED light. Like, let's focus on, on the camera for a second. So I clicked on the camera button. Uh, now I see uh, some details about the camera as to what's going on. But we also have an, uh, an ability to automatically say, okay, I understand this is a Workata camera. Is this Workata camera working? So let's go ahead and click on uh, the actual device itself. Now I'm actually on the Workata cameras API or, or the front panel where you will see the golden hand of Sujit saying, hi to us uh, saying this, this tells us that the switch is completely operational. The devices are actually connected and is passing traffic. Now what's up with the APs? The APs were the next other point, right? So the APs are connected, it shows green. Now let's go ahead and see if we are advertising the network field A corp, we are, and uh, we are able to connect the device and be able to pass traffic. All of this is happening real time without you having to touch anything on the console on the day off and you have the client right here. The point of all of this was, was to say the, the switches are born in the cloud. They are ready for the full blown deployment on the day off and you can have ultimate preparation done on day zero so that your day one on the day of deployment would be as minimal effort as possible. And imagine us uh, going from here from strength to strength only to make things better with uh, you know, policy enforcements right there at the port profile level. And uh, again, taking the difficulty in deployments is, is what MIST is aiming at. And this is, this is one of our first steps towards it.